Hi, Mike Matchett with Small World Big Data. We are here today to talk with WalkMe about, I'm not even sure how to name this category. It's about automating what you do in a company, uh, helping people get their job done better, uh, helping them navigate the plethora of tools that you might provide them as an IT person and really get the most out of it. At the same time, you can turn around and manage those uh, licenses and solutions uh, for the better benefit of your company over time. There's a lot to get into here, uh, but it starts with automation. So let me bring on Rafael Sweary. Uh, welcome, Rafael. Hi, Mike. Thank you for having me in your show. I'm excited. Uh I know. So let's let's just tell me a little bit about where WalkMe started. Was it about ten years ago? And, yeah. And where you're sort of evolving the company to today? So WalkMe started like from uh, an idea one of our co-founder had. He was trying to help his mom uh, banking online, and he would walk her through the phone, and she kept calling with the same questions. He said there must be a better way, and this is where he came up with the original idea from WalkMe. Uh, since then, we really morphed after helping companies with their external facing uh, website and applications. They asked us to help also with their employees that are also using ample of different tools that they were having. So we started helping them with their internal systems as well. Now, at a high, very, very high level, uh, for the user, WalkMe is like a GPS for software. When you use a GPS, you put the address of what you want to do or where you want to go, and the GPS will take you step by step as you do it, fix you along the way, et cetera. We do the same for software. So you want to do something, open a ticket, uh, 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 amend uh, an opportunity, we will help you, tell you where to click, wait for you to click. Once you click, uh, we will do it. The other side of WalkMe is for the management, and what we give them is an ability to understand how software is being used and being utilized so can, they can improve their business processes, reduce friction, and work more efficiently. All right. So, 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 yeah. So at one level, I'm thinking uh, uh, wizards and, and automation, and, and you're coming to a company and helping them say, let's, let's identify our main business processes or tasks that people are doing, and rather than have them learn what could be two or three half dozen or more tools, uh, there is now a more consistent thing, walk me, that helps them get through a task and spans all those tools for them. Correct. So you okay. can go from system to a system because a lot of processes start in one system, go to a second system, go, go to a third system. So think about a salesperson job. It can, it can start with LinkedIn Mm -hmm. and then go into a lead nurturing system and then to the CRM and then to the deal desk, et cetera, for one process. So, And we shouldn't pick on salespeople too much, but uh, have, I've also worked with a lot of sales folks and there is some, you know, issue there getting them to use new technologies, which I think begs the question, uh, Raphael, about digital transformation today. Everyone thinks that we can solve problems with business by buying another piece of software. So I start, I buy a CRM, maybe I'm buying another web tool like this and giving it to my workforce and hoping that helps them become more product productive. What, what's been your experience in that? So I think technically the solutions you buy, the software can do the job, but what will really drive results is when the user uses it correctly. Now, how do you get users to use it correctly? That's the question. So users today actually love technology. All of us have phones and we download apps, et cetera. But when you're in the work environment or when you're a customer of someone, it's kind of forced on you, right? You're, you're forced, you need to use this, you need to use that. And that's um, a lot of the times uh, hurts our employee experience or our customer experience, or if you're a partner of someone, your partner experience, and then we don't use it as much or we don't use it properly. So when I see when I see again not to pick on sales too much here, but that's usually a common point of pain. By the time they have a dozen tools that they're expected to use, software tools or digital tools, it's it's a lot of cognitive overload, and uh, it's not simply learning those tools one time either, right? Because even in IT, we're we're aware of patch upgrades, maintenance. I mean, yeah. every day I turn my computer on, I've got another upgrade going on. Uh, sure. So it's a it's a moving target for for them. Um, this must be a real pain point for co companies. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I think that it used to be called change management. Okay. And what we need to realize, like change management was good when you had one platform, you were an SAP shop or an Oracle shop, and it was on your servers. And then SAP would have a new version 
great, you didn't have to upgrade. You could plan for two years, train the trainers, and do a change management thing. Now, today, because everything is on the cloud, you don't control the upgrade cycle. So it's about dealing with change, anticipating change, and being able to be agile at that time. So I think change management as a, as a process, companies have to stop thinking about change like this. Kind of like engineers don't think about, uh, they, they need to think about gravity. Gravity is not going, it's always there. You always have to plan with gravity in mind. That's how companies need to build their processes and be rigid. And this is the type of things we're helping them do because we move the responsibility from the user to understand the software. We're basically teaching the software to work with the user. What is his task? What is his jobs to be done? Where are the pitfalls? And we help him go through it. Yeah, I like the idea of bringing the software to where the user is rather than expecting the user to keep adapting and exactly. morphing. And is, uh, it's also something I didn't really consider uh, uh, consciously that, as you pointed out, which should be obvious after working in this business for so long, but I used to be able to control change beats or points of change in a company when I did the patches, upgrades, and things like that. When yeah. I, And everyone's using all these cloud tools. Mm -hmm. Those upgrades are forced on them daily. All right, there's, there's nothing right. I do. I can't what say, version I can't of version LinkedIn control. are you using? Yeah, yeah. There's, no, there's no Ask version yourself, control. what version of LinkedIn are you using? What I know. Version of, uh, and I, we were using Salesforce and they decided to move to Lightning. So we were, you know, we were forced, right? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. not like... You can do, and if you talk to them, they're like, "No, no, no! We enabled you by giving you more technology." It's like, "Yeah, and, thanks," and, but and it's true. By the yeah. way, it's true. Yeah. Lightning is a much better system, but it's not something we could control. They said, "Look, we're going to stop supporting it. You need yeah. to move," and we had to move. Yeah. All right. So, uh, when when I'm a management and I'm looking at uh, software solutions that I have in place and and maybe a, a business process, uh, and it's not working or it's not working well, it's not working as I expected. Um, the temptation is to go look for yet another digital transformation solution, yeah. right? Uh, but you can help people now solve this in a, in a better way. So what's kind of the, the, the methodology or, or the way you'd focus on helping sure. someone look at a business process and say, here's what you really should be doing? So first of all, what we would give is the insights into how it's being used. What are the employees are doing? How many error messages? What is challenging? What is not challenging? And then you can act. So you have the data, now you can action it using our editor to fix those things. Again, overlaid, you're not touching the underlying software. And then you can see the results. And if you solve it, you solve it. Because you're gonna see, somebody's come to you, will show you, oh, you know how you have this problem, but use my software, it will solve it. You implement their software and you, you broke other things that people knew how to do in the other software. So it's kind of, it's kind of like, a, you know, what they used to call the Wintel. You would upgrade Windows, Intel didn't work, you had to buy a new computer, mm -hmm. and then a new Windows would come, you have to upgrade again, so. Yeah, what, what, what I like is is where you've gone from just basically automating tasks, you know, helping someone create basically the equivalent of a macro over, yeah. over a bunch of uh, internal applications to something that's really more about managing your business processes and 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 looking at them and getting visibility into those uh, and really deciding where to invest or where to add more effort or exactly. where, where to focus, right? So let, let, let's take an example. Let's assume a company understands that there is a lot of people that are not able to self-task on their website. Mm -hmm. So what do they do? They'll say, okay, we need a new website. They'll bring a, a, a team to, 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 to do a design, UX, et cetera. And, you know, uh, the plan would be six months, six months later, they would be late. So nine months later, they go live. And what is happening, one, the customers now is harder for them because you just made the change. And when they call the support team, it takes the support team to, to support them longer because it's, it's a new website for them as well. So you actually did the roast. What we say is, you want to cut your customer care cost, put WalkMe on your website, deflect the calls because you will simplify it for your customers. They would be able to self-task. Then look at your agents. What is their work processes? So when somebody does, is not able to self-task, how long does it take you to handle a ticket? What are the systems that is used? Let's cut that, build automation there. So instead of spending, I don't know, an average of four minutes per ticket, they would only spend two. So suddenly you're doubling your capacity 
uh, or more because you, you deflect the call. And this is the kind of way of thinking about it. Don't go and change because the change is going to be very costly and going to be very expensive. The systems that you have, you already put all the customizations into them. You thought about the different processes. And so, so, so just use it. Just utilize it before you jump into buying new. Yeah, so it's really a way of making the user experience and user interface better, more streamlined, more focused on, again, what the user is doing and less on what the software needs do, needs to be done exactly. with. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Tell me, tell me a little bit. So, so I understand from the user's perspective, walk me is transparent, right? They don't, they, they, they get this help layer that layers in invisibly over everything. So there's no, yeah. there's no disconcerting thing. Everything gets simpler for them essentially. Right? Yeah. So that's great. But from an IT perspective, what does it take to actually implement this? Is, is there a lot of lifting? Is there a lot of no. coding? Mm -hmm. Is there a lot of integration work? And how does, how do you keep example of a, a process automation current with all those cloud changes we talked about earlier? So first of all, the, the, the installation of walk me when it's customer facing and it's a website yeah. that you control it's one line of code kind of like analytic and that puts us into the website and you can forget about it when it's internal we're uh, basically a snippet in in browser and we work on all browsers so it it this what is establishing the 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 connection to our server now the way you build the process is you don't touch the underlying platform you're just taking somebody who knows how to do the process and is doing it while our editor is there and we basically capture all the steps that they're doing. And once you finished it and you have all the permutations, you are uploading it for all the users that it's relevant for. So it's a codeless system that works very fast. The, the right. impact is very fast. Some of our customers are up and running within two weeks, but the average will take them a month. Okay. But it's okay. not the work time. It's not a month work time. It's planning, et cetera. Right, and look at that, and then and then again, just to just to reiterate this, once those you, you're automating processes at a let's call it a tactical level, you're gathering strategic information about how those processes are being used and things that they can be used. You can be benchmarking against other industry Absolutely. settings, for example. You can be looking at what you've done last uh, quarter to this quarter and and, and things like that. Exactly. Um, so there's a there's a, some big financial impact here on a business. Oh, very, very big financial impact. Implemented correctly, WalkMe will slash training and help desk tickets if it's employee facing slashing uh, and it would slash your customer care costs it's it's significant it's double digit it's nothing that can be it's very clear uh, the impact that you have but you do need to to have an open mindset and not like the biggest competition to walk me is the status quo like i'll train or i'll try to make it simple so people will understand and keep reiterating like that but um, the innovative companies and, the, and successful companies are, are understanding that let's digitize that. Let's mm -hmm. digitize the, 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 the last mile between the user to the software. Right. The digital transformation isn't simply back end office systems. It's no. about enabling people to get their job the done. Right. Exactly. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, uh, I. This is fascinating. I think we could go on and, and even dive into some of the, the technical aspects of how you do that automation because there's some cool things there. But I think we're sort of at the end of our time here. So, Raphael, if someone is interested in finding out about how they could maybe leverage WalkMe or what it's all about or what it takes to bring it into their organization, what would you have them go do? So the best is going to our website and, uh, and signing up for a demo and really join more than 2,000 of our customers that are really and 31 percent of the fortune 500 that are really changing how they drive the results of their digital transformation all right so check that out uh and uh, again it's not that hard to get started or implement and the, the yeah. while it looks like an automation front-end automation uh widget or wizard it's really all about digital transformation and getting the most out of all your efforts so it's worth looking into uh thank you rafael Mike, thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you. All right. Take care, guys.